I'm Van. I'm Sorry. That's Booby. And Vita and Chip, look, Vinny found the batteries. Now we are at full strength, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is a song that um, was heavily requested on the Vin and Sorry page. So the only way to like guarantee that your song is gonna be played in a week is if you get your Patreon alliance to go to go full bore on your particular yep. song. Um, but we also have the website, and we can track on the website what's most popular and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this band, first of all, I never heard this band before. This is uh, was it make them suffer. Well, hopefully it truly was uh, <laughs> heavily requested and not some glitch. <laughs> no, uh, these guys are heavily... Well, it was interesting because there, there were a couple people that kept sending us screenshots of the... Uh, <laughs> of where it was ranking on Look the page. Look at it! Look at it! Yeah, they were like... <laughs> a bunch of people were like, okay, here's the ranking on the page. So, yeah. <clears throat> so this should be very, very, very interesting. So this is Make Them Suffer Never Bloom. I like the term Never Bloom. I think that's a beautiful term. Um, but I've never heard of this band before, so that's that. If you want to check us out as far as political, social, religio commentary, there is Middle America of Vin and Sorry. If you want to see behind the scenes in my life and the life of the kids, and sometimes Vinny as well, then check out My Sorry Life and you'll isn't get some the, of that. Isn't the interview series still going there? No, I mean, I already finished the kids. We actually have to do ours, so I need to interview <clears> you and you have to interview me. And I have a question for you that I'm... Certain you won't be able to answer. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is Never Bloom. Make them suffer. Let's do it. And go.
This is another one I really, really like. I think you like this genre. I think this is like. Which genre is I this? I think this is deathcore. I I do. You know you know you know uh, the we've got a good friend that hates deathcore. He's dedicated his entire channel, but. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to the big homie. Oh, oh man. You shall go How can you name. hate Deathcore? I don't know. I think this is it. I'm not sure. I'm oh, my sure word. Yes, I, I I love it. Ah! What do you like about it? I just, I love the vocals. First of all, I couldn't believe that they had that. So I totally threw me off because. They had what? Okay, I'm getting to it. Oh. She starts playing the piano. I guess it was her. Was it, Who was playing the piano? Oh, it was a girl. Yeah. So she starts playing the piano, and that's how it starts. So, like, I'm thinking that it's gonna go in like some other direction and then the deaf vocals like pull in there and they're going hard as fuck but at the same time she's still doing that thing in the background I was like oh what is this this is amazing and then that just kept going and then was it Karak on grand it was the uh, funerary dirge of a violinist yeah they had, I, I don't remember they had the I know piano what they had the piano going off in the background too Unbelievable. Yeah, but this was the sweetest melody behind. Yeah. Like it's pretty sweet. The, Watch it wasn't like like the other one I think was kind of like a sad melody. This one I didn't think that was necessarily sad. Like the the piano in the background. I don't know. I it was just like sweet and it was beautiful in the background, but then like then all that started in and that kid threw me off too because I know I call everybody kid. I always feel like I'm older than everybody. I don't know why. The singer? An old soul, I guess. The singer? Yes! Okay. Because he had, you know, he has a preppy shirt and his pants and stuff. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden when he busted out with the death vocals, I was like, what is this? <laughs> I totally didn't expect that. And then they were just going in so hard and the music was just, oh, it was like, everything was like, oh, I really, 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 really liked it. And then when he fl flung his guitar like that, I was playing like that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm sure that that probably that's been done a hundred times in different bands. But it's just that I know, that's the first time I ever saw it that I that I know of. Um, so people, anytime I say stuff like this, people are like, "Why are you living under a rock?" Blah blah blah. I grew up in a very strict Christian home, and so we didn't have music. Like it was very limited. It had to be Christian, and even that was pretty limited. So like. Vinny and I got married back in March, and like since then he's been introducing me to all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm like entering a whole new world. <laughs> and like, you know what's funny? Like, I don't think I liked death vocals when I first heard them. No, you did. I was like, what is what in the world? This is not art. But now I'm like, what? This is great. I don't know what we were singing about, but the video will have like some sad elements to it. My guess is it's he, about a relationship and... Yeah, I think he was... It was very interesting. Um, it seemed that he was using forest slash garden imagery to depict a relationship. Yeah. That, that went... That had the potential to go somewhere and that... It just stuck. That, it didn't. That died out. Yeah. So... But in the end, it seemed like... Well, in the end, you saw him, like, come up to her and he was old, you know? And you know he was like bleeding, so I'm guessing like it was you know the yeah. the pain inflicted through the the relationship, but then um, like she turned away from him, like he got like very young, and the rose like or the the carnation or whatever it was got really young too. Everything got young, but she still turned away, and then he he went back old again. But then the whole forest started growing up. All these all these uh, Australian bands, man. This is Australian again. Yeah. What in the world? And we really love the bands from Australia. We had Mio, we had The Artist Murder, we have uh, these guys now. These guys are... are uh, it's some inspiring stuff right here. Yeah, I wonder what it is about Australia. I know. They're kicking ass. Oh right my now. word. Come on, America. Where y'all at? America. Um, yeah, it seems that he was using garden forest imagery to talk about the... the um, their relationship and it obviously ended and then he, he's trying to see if it can work again and and it can't so <clears throat> a single tear from the elms of emptiness falls to stain the cracked earth and the soil breathes one final desperate breath of life mm. tiny budding flowers and colors of joy and hope explode from the waterbed undying undimming mm. water bead undying undimming before shattering to dust 
These woods have no memory of the touch of sun or the smell of dew, and all I can hear through the deafening silence are the moaning trees. Ooh. I don't know how you can read it with such a boring tone. <clears throat> oh, you can read it next time. Hmm? Um, yeah, it's interesting because when you when you you know find your girl, you find your your partner, or whatever. At the very very beginning, there's all these possibilities of what you can what you think you're going to be able to accomplish and what life is going to be like and how happy you're going to be and all the rest of it. And then, and then, uh, life, it was Maru who cursed this yeah, place. Yeah, what's Maru? It could be tomorrow. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Yeah. Because, you know. Yeah. Because you're stuck in the, you know, if you just stayed in the, in that one slice of time. Yeah. Then, it, then, then. It's the the anticipation of having that good future is is a good state in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then tomorrow comes and screws everything up. Or Maro is the name of a person, which is also possible. Mm -hmm. Right, because a lot of people Maro is actually a, a feminine is. name. Now it, it was Maro who cursed his place. Now cheerless and stagnant, it screams, it in, screams the night. in the night. Go ahead, you can read it. Seems that I'm not reading. Well, it the either. first one was more to me, but. <clears throat> um, so we hearken the cries from the heart of the wood. I linger on in doubt. Darkness comes early down here, wishing upon ages these flowers will someday bloom. I wait here forever just to see these flowers bloom. They never bloom. Yeah, so he's obviously the this person or time cursed their little garden forest thing in the jail. And that's the end of that. That's sad. But he's he's but waiting he for it to try because to. Because he's hoping it's gonna it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. Yeah, I remember I remember being in a relationship like that. Those are difficult, man. Sad. Because you, it went on for about a decade and a half. Of like, oh well, you know, and and it's not saying that you were the perfect one in the relationship. It's just mm -hmm. that the <laughs> hoping it'll work or hoping that it'll it'll find some way to fix itself or you know God is going to come and, and fix it or whatever and he does a lot of the times and other times for whatever reasons it doesn't happen but I remember being there and, and always but it was it was interesting for me because I never really had the assumption that it wasn't going to work out like I never thought that it was not going to work out you know, I always thought that I would figure out a way to, to fix it and it, it, it didn't and that's a pretty crazy it's a pretty tough realization but the longer and longer you wait to try to see it work out the more and more difficult it becomes to release mm -hmm. that dream you know mm -hmm. so leave that for us it's interesting as Marvel you know the, the uh, it's very interesting to me that he uses forest garden imagery to talk about their relationship and and how yeah. how it how it died because yeah you know, in a very you, you just think about Adam and Eve, and you know, the aside aside from yeah, aside from the like existential, oh my God, you ate the apple. That's mm -hmm. what created you know the Holocaust and race wars and and tsunamis and all that in biblical theology, mm -hmm. right? Aside from that, I just think that it, it was a real, it's a relationship killer. They were obviously never the same after that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting. You'll hear He's Eve. He's obviously talking about Adam and Eve. But... Yeah, you'll hear Eve talk to God in the Bible, mm -hmm. and you know, obviously they relate. They were still relating to each other because you know they, yeah. they had kids. But it's just a very. Can you imagine the tension? Like if you stub your toe <laughs> outside the garden, it's like this didn't happen before. You know, like it'd be one of those things where you just have this unspoken thing where you're never going to get back to and the other thing is even if the relationship isn't over mm -hmm. like let's say that you're in a relationship there are certain like patches of of time or land in a relationship where it's very foresty and very gardeny mm -hmm. and and it's like trying to get back there with the with the person and, and being like ah, i don't know if that's gonna happen mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it doesn't necessarily. I think in this particular situation, though, because when he says you betrayed us, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I think he's he's talking about a relationship that ended. But I still I also think like in relationships that a person's in, it can it could still be like that. 
you know, like you could still be like, oh man, we had we had our garden moment like here, and then now it's, you know, now it's not like that, and, and trying to get back there, and then you know, giving up as to whether or not you you think you know the flowers blooming is ever going to happen for your relationship again, you know, those are that's a pretty poetic way to talk about these things that are very very commonplace to to the human experience as far as relationships go. In these woodlands we wove, dreaming amidst the groves. Morrow, no one could stop us, although now the orchards no longer grow. So I'll recl- reclaim the throne of woe. I'm starting to count the stars by myself. Why? Um, and this winter is eating away at my soul. Um, it was just sad because, well, Remember that whole, like, span of time, like, that we went, like, the moon was, like, super significant? Yep. So, like, that, like, what he's saying, I'm starting to count the stars by myself, which means, I'm guessing, that they used to count the stars together, but he's been going through this season with her for so long that now he's seeing that he's gonna, he's, he's, that's his stepping to... He's still going forward in a sense, but at the same time, he's not completely going forward because he's still doing the things that they did. You know what I mean? But he's alone now. She's not counting with him. Yeah. And like the stars, there's always like wonder in the stars and the, you know, the night sky. And they would sit beneath the night sky, I guess, and count the stars together. And I don't know, just, and then it says, and this winter is eating away at my soul. And sometimes like it feels, well, he's saying, you know, he was talking about there's no more growth. There hasn't been growth in a long time. And then he's he's depicting that as winter, and like you know how winter just has that, um, it has that cold that can feel like it like gets into your bones, like it just gets so deep within you, you know. And this is this is where he is. I always remember the day I was stabbed in the back, stabbed in the back. So, which I'm guessing goes to the how she betrayed him. Hmm. I'll reclaim the throne of woe. That means he was on it, but I guess being with her, he's like, oh, I don't need to feel bad about myself or sorry for myself anymore. Yeah. Which, you know, does I always say, like, it's, that's really dangerous to yeah. put on a person yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that person's going to rescue you from depression. Because I just feel like being a person who has experienced depression or, or whatever, or whoa, whatever you want to call it, that's just way too heavy of a thing to put on another person that it's their job to to, Mm -hmm. you know, heal you of your depression. And then when you're out of your life, then they're going back there because of you. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Which I don't think that, I don't think that anybody ever articulates it that way. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like when you hear things like, oh, one for you, I would, you know, be all depressed or blah, 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 or this Mm -hmm. relationship saved my life. I'm always like, "Mm -hmm." yeah, Mm -hmm." (laughs) yeah, (laughs) you know, like, I'm, uh, I'm not sure about that. It sounds romantic, I think, but then this is the other side of it. Yeah. Although, I like, he said, no one could stop us. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the, the, right now, this is completely, un- well, not completely unrelated, but the Warriors are going through this thing, because Kevin Durant and, uh, what's his face, Draymond Green are having a fight. Mm-hmm. Draymond told Kevin, we, we were winning before you! Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there's all this petty stuff going back and forth, and then one of the one of the guys on the team said, nobody in this league can beat us except for us because of all their little, you know, whatever. So it's it's an interesting yeah. thing, like a certain relationships where it's like, there's a lot of adversity that comes with, you know, being in relationships sometimes and it's like, no one could stop us. Mm. Although the orchards no longer grow. And I think the- Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, it, it's, it, yep. it had to come from inside, yep. you know, because at the end of the day, when he says no one could stop us, that means that there was some sort of adversity that he felt that he was confident that they could overcome. Mm-hmm. But if the two people aren't are committed to making the thing work, then for, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. Halas, that's it. So, I thought lyrically, you know, he's... And to this moment, I don't really know what the balance is as far as, like, waiting for somebody to come around to make a relationship work. You know, if I had to do it over again, 
I, you know, I don't, I don't think I would have changed anything as far as how long I waited or, you know, how long it took for, for me to, you know, because if I'd have, if I'd have, you know, got out of there 10 years in, then I would always thought to myself, you know, could you have, you know, but going to the very, very, very limit of things, mm -hmm. even though it was very, it was probably, I mean, that's pretty much half my life, you know? <clears throat> so it's yeah. like pretty extreme. Yep. Uh, probably most people would say, but, you know, I don't know. If you love somebody, I mean, you just, that's what you do, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's easy for me to say as a dude, you know, I, there's different different sets of problems as a woman, you know, like yeah. some, that might kill you, literally. Yeah, to stay to that. You know? Yep. So, I, uh -huh. I, I don't want to like completely romanticize that. That's why I always say like, I don't know, I don't really know what the line was. I just know for me, waiting that long was yeah, the right thing to do. Your, your situation was extreme, but you're also an extreme person. Right. So, you know, not, not everybody's built for that. <laughs> Well, it definitely takes a toll. It definitely, yeah. definitely takes a toll on you. Yeah. And you're not, you know, yeah. you're not the same. I mean, it's probably you. You're probably dealing with some fallout from from that. So, oh. so <laughs> well, let all the people know. Um, so yeah. So you know, I don't know. I don't know what the the right thing to do is there as far as how long. And it's always easy for people outside who've never been in that situation to tell you, oh yeah, stay with it, you know, especially oh. in Christian circles and no, you know, people who don't know what they're talking about, you know, um, mm -hmm. but. Well, and like you said, like everybody has different tolerance levels. So, you know, what one person might say, that's a deal breaker for me. Like you, right. you do this thing, you know? Right. And Him and other Liz people, betrayal. Yeah. That wasn't a deal breaker for me. Right. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, not that it didn't hurt, not that betrayal doesn't hurt. Well, no, yeah. But I mean, it's just that, you know. That's not a deal breaker for me. Right. Right. That's a, it's a, that's a, I, I, the, the video went really, you know, he was an old man yeah. in the video and he was bleeding and all the rest of it, but then when he got in contact with her, he was young again. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was the hope that maybe, because she, it was actually that she turned and looked at him. Right. That was what brought him young again and gave him the life back in that thing. Right. So I think it was that chance that, oh, maybe this is going to be okay. Right. But then it wasn't. Did he die? What happened to him? Like, he leaned up against the tree and then, like, he did he fall to the ground? And then, because the angle was. Yeah, and then, then the, the, the thing, like. Yeah, and it maybe. Was and maybe very, that. Very maybe that's explaining that, you know, there's some times where. It's that that relationship wasn't gonna go anywhere. Like it was, it was done, and yeah. she was, it was betrayal, and she was that was it. Like it, she wasn't there, and so like he had to get to the point where he was like, okay, like he almost in a sense died to the relationship, and then you know like I read this quote one time that basically I, I can't remember exactly how they worded it, but they essentially said like that human beings and the love within human beings were like a tree, and like if you have ever cut off a limb of a tree, like. All of that growth that was going to that limb now goes to the other limbs and they grow and you'll grow new limbs and like unless you chop off all of them you know right. what I mean and even if you lop it down really low it'll start sprouting from that very low right. point and so that the love of human beings can be very much like that that you know when when something gets severed well all of that life goes to another area and um, and, and new possibilities and stuff come from that like just because that relationship didn't work with that person doesn't mean that you can never love again. Right. You know? Yeah, it's true. Watch all. What do you give the song? 10. All wrestling. <laughs> we do this thing. When I went down, um, when I was doing the My Story Life, I, go, I went downstairs and asked the kids a question. And um, Doreen was like, what are you, do what are you doing? And oh, Johan yeah, yeah. was Yo like, man. he's like, She's doing a vlog, obviously, and he's like rubbing his nose. So all day, we, all the kids are like, obviously, obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, eight point eight for me. I'm not talking to you for the rest of the night. You betrayed me. Because <laughs> I gave it an eight point eight. Yeah. How oh. dare you have a differing opinion than mine? Yeah, stop <laughs> woman explaining. <laughs> yeah, it's eight, eight, eight point eight. Okay, good. so what? What were you not a, really a fan of? 
I mean, I just don't think that this is a song that you pull out 20 years later and say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you not like you Deep do Purple. your tens by that. It's yeah. not like Deep Purple, that Deep Purple song that we did, where yeah. it's like amazing right now. No, I see right what you're saying. I, I don't rate them by, like, can they go in the vault? I rate them by, do I like them? I know. <laughs> this I is, know. This is about me, obviously. All right, so <laughs> you gave it a 10 yeah. for, for a song that you'll probably listen to three more times in the year. And then uh, <laughs> I gave it a solid 8.8. .8. It's a good song. It's a good song. All right. Vid out. Sorry out. Gone.